Firstly, I, I laid on top of this a uh, coordinate set of axes, right? So you've got an x-axis, you've got a y-axis, and then you've got the origin hanging around in the middle, okay? In order to talk about any of this, if it's on a coordinate set of axes, it's going to be useful to have, well, coordinates, right? Now, for example, let's call this guy up here. This point that we started with, well, that I started with. I'm going to give him a name. Now, being that these four points don't have anything to do with each other, right? I don't have much to say, oh, this has to be in the first quadrant, or it has to be in the second, or wherever, right? It really is a random point, and you can redraw a whole new quadrilateral, and it'll be somewhere else, right? And the one sitting next to you, those are somewhere else as well. So I'm just going to call this as general as I can make it. Now, think back to when we were doing, you know, um, coordinate, uh, equations of lines and all that kind of thing. If you've got two random points, and you say, oh, I want to have a, a line through those two points, we put the coordinates of those into a formula. What do we call those points, usually? What do we name the coordinates? We would usually call them x1, y1, because we're like, I don't know, it's any x and y that you like. And then you've got a second one. So instead of x1, y1, you call it x2, y2. OK, so that's fine. I've gotten halfway around. I guess I might as well continue. I do have four points after all, and again, they have nothing to do with each other, right? So therefore, I have to call it x3, y3, and x4, y4, okay? So at least I've got names on this thing. Then I have to think, how did we create that red shape again? How did we make it? We created midpoints, didn't we? We bisected every side of the quadrilateral, and then that gave us new coordinates, okay? Now, to bisect, you find the midpoint. Well, you guys know how to find midpoints, don't you? Now, I'm going to give you one more clue. I'm going to give you one more clue, which is more of a question than anything, than anything else. A parallelogram. Unlike the original shape that you drew, a parallelogram is a very special shape. Parallelograms have heaps of property, properties, which means if you want to prove that something is a parallelogram, you actually have lots of different ways to do it. What's the most obvious way? I mean, the way that stands out to you from the diagram itself. Yeah, Nadine? Okay, gradient is the most obvious way. If you can find these gradients and these gradients, if it is a parallelogram, they should be the same, right? That would be one way to do it, and that's fine. You actually can totally do it that way. However, one of the things I'm going to try and illustrate to you under this little subheading today is that while sometimes you can do something one way, that doesn't mean that you should. Think again, parallelograms, sides are parallel, uh, or opposite sides are. What else do you know about a parallelogram? What else do you know? Yes, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Diagonals bisected. Okay, diagonals, this interval here, and this interval here, they should bisect each other. Now, how would you go about proving that using coordinate geometry? Let me give you another couple of clues, right? Uh, opposite sides in parallelograms, right? They're not just parallel. What else are they? Look at the diagram. They're equal, aren't they? So if you found some distances, that would be another technique that you could use. I'm not saying that you should, but you can, right? And we could keep going. There are lots of things about a parallelogram that make it a parallelogram that if you know are true, you can say, therefore, A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Have a think about that. See how far you can get. I'm going to show you the way that I'm going to prove it, but as I sort of alluded to before, just as important as the way that I prove it is the way that I choose not to prove it. Uh, and I will illustrate for you why this is so important. <coughs> the part that I'm going to choose through is actually one Nadine mentioned, which is that of all the properties that I can think of for proving that a parallelogram is a parallelogram, the fact that the diagonals bisect as you'll see in a minute, is a particularly good way to go about it. Not necessarily like it's a better better proof, but as you'll see, I think it's actually a lot faster. So let's first get a picture on this. Uh, and one of the things you'll discover very quickly when you're having a go at these questions is that the picture informs so much of what you do. I know drawing a good picture takes time, but the time it saves you in just staring at a question, not really knowing what on earth is talking about, is well worth it the effort. So if you haven't already, go ahead and uh, draw on for me the diagonals of this new parallelogram. Okay? Or at least that's what we think it is. Okay, now this point in here, we want to show that these diagonals meet at that point 
and that they mutually bisect one another. That phrase is really important, that they mutually bisect each other, because there are other shapes where the quadrilaterals bisect, but they don't bisect both ways. So for example, if you draw for yourself on the side of your page, a kite, which is emphatically not a parallelogram, right? You can see, one of the things about a kite is that if you look at the shorter diagonal here, or at least in my kite is the shorter one, that's bisected, isn't it? In fact, it's bisected at right angles, which is kind of fancy, but the other diagonals look the same. So I want to prove that these diagonals both bisect each other. What would be the way that I could do this? Okay. Well, let's rewind a little bit. We said that we want to find out the coordinates of this uh, or it would be useful to find out the coordinates of this new parallelogram, new shape. And because I know the coordinates, or I've named the coordinates of all of the original points, it's actually very easy to state what, say, this point is. If this is x1, y1, and this is x2, y2, all you have to do is quote the midpoint formula and tell me what the coordinates of this point are. What are they? x1 plus x2 divided by 2, comma, y1 plus y2, also divided by 2. You're just averaging, right? And the wonderful thing about this is because every point that we've just placed on the coordinate axes is in the same format, it doesn't take me much mental thought to keep on going all the way around. So for example, this guy down here will not be x1 plus x2, it'll be x2 plus x3. Same for the y's. And you can go all the way around and complete that. In fact, if you haven't already, why don't you go ahead and add them along with you? where all of the vertices of my so-called parallelogram are, how am I going to show that these mutually bisect each other, these diagonals, okay? Now, remember I said to you, it's going to be just as important for you to see the way that I don't do this as well as the way that I do do it. If two things mutually bisect each other, what that means is these two lengths are the same and these two lengths are the same, right? These two lengths and these two lengths. So when I think about like saying that, the most obvious way to show, for example, that these two lengths are the same is, well, find these two lengths. How would I do that? These two lengths I'm pointing at right now. Let's give them names, shall we? Let's call this uh, P, Q, R, and S. If you want to, just for the sake of completeness, you can call your original, where did that go? I'll just use this one. You can call your original shape uh, A, B, C, D. So what are the names of the diagonals? I've got P, R, and Q, S. What do you think is an appropriate name for the place where they're all supposed to be? It's right in the middle, right? T, T. Well, I suppose you could call it T. I probably wouldn't have called it T because that suggests it's in order, P, Q, R, S, T, like a pentagon. I probably would have called them something different like M because he's in the middle. After.